If you're wondering why I only released a single video this year, allow me to explain. Our upstairs neighbor's furnace decided to dump their entire apartment's water system directly into my workshop. Over 100 gallons of filthy fluid poured onto my parts, flooded my filaments, and reduced our home to a black mold infested death trap. My workshop, Void Star Lab, was destroyed. Over the last four weeks, I went from business as usual to squatting our own rotting apartment to, well, let's not spoil the fun. This entire insane saga all began because of beef jerky filament. Loyal ladies, genuine gentlemen, and steadfast cyborgs, welcome to the liminal void between Void Star Labs. So it's the last week of December 2022, and I'm making an episode about the world's most super duper cursed 3D filaments. The meaty metamaterial was part of a greater plan. Since my very first paycheck, I've been socking away like a third of my income in the hope of one day buying Brooke and I our own house. After decades of saving, the time was finally right. The strategy was simple. I would lighten the workload by focusing on fan favorite series like every single filament. We'd look for a house through February, close late March, patch it up around April, and run out our lease. That way we could continue dropping videos and move our stuff bit by bit after the day's work was done. Easy as your mom and significantly cleaner. Legendary punchy man Mike Tyson was once asked how he planned to counter Evander Holyfield in their very first fight. His response, everyone has a plan, till they get punched in the mouth. Wise words indeed, though this plan went more like their second bout, the one where Tyson ripped Holyfield's ear off with his teeth. It turns out there are actually a lot of bizarre 3D filaments, and in classic Zack Friedman fashion, I bought way too many of them. The script had swollen to over an hour. Production was a week behind schedule. The workshop was absolutely stacked with boxes of spools of the most disconcerting, disquieting, and downright despicable 3D printing materials you could possibly imagine. I didn't know it yet, but that concentration of cursed filaments had cursed me. As I was purchasing piles of pestilential polymers, Wifey Dearest was doing her homework. She investigated literally every Zillow listing in the general area, assembled a shortlist, and booked back-to-back -back house showings. This fine day mid-January, she was scouting the prime candidates herself so we could revisit the best of the best together. I was back in the workshop, deeply sniffing a benchy infused with tiny flecks of powdered, dehydrated cow meat. These filaments are extremely cursed. Then I got a frantic call. Some schmuck had put in a lowball bid on our number one contender and the seller was about to take it. If we wanted the place, we had to check it out right now and put in an offer within two hours. Brooke was on her way and I was supposed to drop everything. As soon as we arrived, I realized why Brooke wanted me to see the place. It was perfect, just great location, still in Colorado, close enough to Micro Center while also being within driving distance of the most romantic of the Rocky Mountains. And most importantly, it had a huge finished basement, perfect, to put some sort of lab in. We took it. As one of Brooke's friends put it, we went to the house store, walked up to the counter and said, one house please. Instead of cutting those last few scenes and showing you a bunch of cursed filaments, I now had to drop everything immediately and get a mortgage. But then it got worse. Banks are highly skeptical YouTubing is a real job. They wanted me to prove my business was still alive by showing them a substantial deal within 21 days of closing. I had no receivables, after all, I hadn't finished a video, and at the rate we were going, it wasn't going to happen in time. But then it got worse. Months earlier, I had committed to making a sponsored episode for SparkFun Electronics featuring their production process. We already had all our on-site footage. Shout out to Casey, Colin, Juno, Nate, and the rest of the SparkFun crew, you folks rule. Well, I'd promised their video would release in January, and February was in a week. Scope Creep and House Havoc had delayed the cursed filament so much I had to abandon it and move directly to the next video. There was no time to cry over sunk costs, I said, as I dragged terabytes of cursed footage to my archival server. I wrote and shot the new script, dumped it into Premiere, and got to work. With about 10 minutes left to cut, I executed a tactical retreat to the kitchen to mix up a gimlet. The lime juice kind, not the roses syrup kind. I'm a cyborg and a snob. I'm a snob -borg. Beverage in hand, I returned to the Sigma grind, but then it got worse. Way worse. Before I could clear the hallway, my footsteps were drowned out by a very loud, very long gurgling sound. Dearest wife, Brooke, I inquired, perchance you perceive yonder gurgle. Half asleep, she grunted, you're taking a bath. 
Loaf of my life, I replied, I'm not taking a bath, I'm in the hallway. Followed by, hey, my feet are wet, maybe I am taking a bath in the hallway. Followed by, oh dear, water seems to be pouring out of the heating duct. Followed by, Jesus nipples, it's raining in the filament closet. Followed by, <laughs> chocolate covered <laughs> squirrels, hot water spraying at every light fixture and sprinkler, what the fuck? But then it got worse. A pipe had detached from the upstairs neighbor's heating coil and unleashed an entire apartment's worth of warm water. Pipes, radiator, boiler, and all right onto our heads and it was still coming. A monsoon was raining from the ceiling. Millie dove under the bed as an ear-splitting beep echoed off the increasingly soggy walls. Water was spewing from the smoke alarms, and as their AC power shorted out, they were going into panic mode. I grabbed rubber gloves and unplugged them, but then it got worse. I had uncorked a torrent of dingy water directly into my parts rack. As it cascaded from bin to bin, soaking all my components, I had mere seconds to snap open my server's hot swap bays and rescue the hard drives containing the only copy of my mostly cut hour-long cursed filament video. I stashed the discs, grabbed every towel I could find, and ran for the shop vac, but water was already higher than the carpets, pouring down the hallway, filling the bathroom, creeping into the den, and it was still coming. While I was trying to hoover up an indoor thunderstorm, Brooke had run upstairs, bashed on the neighbor's door, bowled her way into their apartment, and was closing every valve she could reach. She wants you to know that it was one o'clock in the morning and her social anxiety was raging, so please tell Brooke how proud you are of her in the comments section below. With the water mains cut, back in the lab, the murky torrent was shriveling to an awkward trickle, but the damage was done. The filament dehydrator read 50% rising, then went dark as I yanked all the power cords and hit the breakers. I could barely rescue anything. Boxes of filament were blocking the way, because my apartment was full of cursed filament for some reason, and the soggy bottoms would give out if I tried to so much as move them. Droplets dripped, puppies panicked, then clink, the ice in my drink finally lost structural integrity. I had been carrying my gymlet around the entire time and it now contained, well, more house wall water than alcohol. I dumped it down the sink and mixed up a gin martini so the apartment would at least have something dry in it. My tools and PC were sitting high above the flood on the other side of the room, so they were safe, but the rest of my stuff was in deep trouble. The filament was soaked, my supplies literally full of water. My camera equipment, was still locked in the airtight flight cases from the Spark Fun field trip. Oh, thanks Satan. I didn't even lose the pick and place video. Anyone who uses Premiere Pro reflexively saves every 15 seconds, even when they're not in front of a computer. But as I dumped my fifth wet vac bucket of brackish swamp water, I realized I was in too deep, and I mean that literally. This was no leak, this was a full on flood. My piddly <laughs> sucker might as well have been a paper napkin. And with nothing better to do, I did the only thing us YouTubers can, whip out a camera and make it look dramatic. It was two o'clock in the morning when the handyman finally arrived groggy and grizzled. He whipped out an infrared camera and said, there's three feet of water in the walls, we're f he called in another groggier, even more grizzled handyman who borrowed the camera and confirmed we were indeed f They called in a restoration team and as they deployed the chunkiest chungus of a dehumidifier I have ever seen, they admitted it was a token effort. All that water had poured through the grungy insulation, through the moldy walls, into the carpet, under the liner, and deep into the floor itself. In his professional opinion, the entire apartment was f***ed and it was going to get worse. Every fleck of fungus was having a feeding frenzy and was about to start firing spores everywhere. Within a week, the entire place was going to be uninhabitable. The whole unit had to be stripped down to the studs. We were guaranteed losing our apartment. Hell, the landlord was probably losing our apartment. I finally threw in the towel, metaphorically, as they were all saturated with liquid scum, and squelched my way back to bed. Dawn broke, and five hours later we received a call from a humanoid reptile in the landlord's office. It wasn't reaching out to offer aid or even apologies. This icy veined creature was trying to hard sell us on a new one year lease for our sheer unit in the same complex. You're getting a bargain. We were going to raise your rent anyways, it said. There was a brief pause as the mid level salamander licked its nictitating membranes. Sign a new lease, it spat, attempting to capitalize on our mammalian emotions. Sign a new lease, 
or hit the road by Saturday. It was Wednesday. I followed up by email asking what its fell brood intended to exactly do in two days. You know, was it gonna send goons to evict us? I must have been dealing with a newly hatched youngling because it made the mistake of saying absolutely not, but still get out by the end of the week. In other words, they couldn't get rid of us until the mold put us in the hospital. The rental reptilian rattled its frills and hissed to the heavens, but ancient instincts compel its kind to obey state and federal regulations. Technically correct is the only correct that counts. Our renter's insurance saw our soaked situation as a cut and dry case, which gave us a unique opportunity. They would pay to move us out. The land lizard was gonna void our lease. Our impulsive real estate commitment meant if our realtor, mortgage agent, yours truly, and yours truly's beloved life companion managed to pull some serious heroics, we might be able to move directly into a shiny new house before the place degenerated into a fungal hellscape straight out of the Federal Bureau of Control's basement. During all this insanity and calamity, our only income was YouTube ad revenue and Patreon donations. And let's just say YouTube doesn't exactly butter its breadwinners. Without our generous patrons, we would literally be living out of suitcases, and we certainly would not be making this video right now. I'm preparing a special thank you gift, the first and only tour of the old Void Star Lab, taken minutes before I started tearing the whole thing down. It's very rough, but so is the situation. I'd just like to say my personal thanks to each and every lab partner, lab scientist, lab assistant, and collaborator, you are all absolute lifesavers. Now back to the total fucking pandemonium, because it got worse. A realtor had sweet talked a seller into triple timing the timetable. Our mortgage agent was using a machete to cut through red tape. Our Allstate guy was looking at the landlords and making the shack face. There was just one missing piece. Yours truly still had nothing to show the mortgage lender, and now I couldn't even reach my computer. So I drove out to Micro Center, plopped down too much money, and walked out with the most ergoblood saturated Leak Gamer Power laptop they carry. I commandeered the kitchen table, and in a three day death march fueled by Morningstar nuggets and high octane tiki drinks, wrapped the entire pick and place video. If you saw that video and wondered why it's thumbnail, and frankly, the entire thing was just so scuffed, it's because the situation in the apartment was rapidly deteriorating. The trim was warping, the carpet was crunchy, black blotches were appearing on the walls and growing by the hour. I finished that video with a trackpad in three 18 hour days, wearing a respirator while buying a house. But the episode got done, and then it got worse. See, I had hoped the video itself would appease the lender, but no, my own face on my own monetized channel was not enough evidence that I was still in business. This was bad. We couldn't collect from SparkFun fast enough, and without the workshop, I certainly could not record another video. Patreon supporters were keeping food on the table, but I had to show serious action from a serious company seriously fast, or this deal would be scuttled for lack of a better pun. And then it got better. The clouds parted, a chorus rang out, and a single sunbeam landed on my overpriced gaming slab. It was an email from Keysight Technologies, the same folks who sponsored that ridiculous pro gaming oscilloscope project the last time we moved. See, at the beginning of this whole ordeal, Dan from their content team had offered to advance me a sponsorship so I'd have something to show the lender, but the guy with signing authority was still on vacation. Well, this email was from his boss, Linus, and it contained a letter of intent on Keysight letterhead, making unambiguously clear. Voidstar Lab LLC had an active business relationship with a billion dollar S&P 500 corporation. We were saved. I forwarded it to the lender and they promptly rejected it because it wasn't dated. F***ing bureaucrats. Thankfully, Linus pulled through again and a couple of sphincter clenching spore snorting days later, they approved our application. And just like that, Mrs. Jones and Mr. Friedman were homeowners. But then it got worse. It was morning, only a few hours after I finally fell asleep on our makeshift couch pillow fort bedroom. Brooke was shaking me by the shoulders. The movers had called, not to set up an appointment, to let us know they were outside. There was no time to pack up, organize, buy furniture, or even mitigate the radon in the new house that would slowly transform my entire body into a single sentient tumor. We were moving right now. Less than a month after starting our house hunt, just under two weeks after the biblical workshop flood, we were flopped on the bone dry, mold free floor of the Friedman Jones household, AKA Shea Friedmans. If you're wondering why I didn't drop a video in January, consider this my doctor's note. And I mean that literally, that mold gave broken eye sinus infections that lasted weeks. We were left to simultaneously unpack, renovate, and maintain an entire goddamn house while sneezing our faces off and continuing to try to crank out videos in this partial skeleton of a studio. But we had beaten the odds. Better, 
we had beaten the lizards. And as your reward for enduring my sob story, I'm going to give you a sneak peek. I am transforming this entire basement into the ultimate 3D printing, electronics, hacking, gaming, video creating, secret underground lair. Pardon the mess, this is all I managed to unpack before I had to just jam another video out so the YouTube algorithm doesn't completely kill my entire livelihood. First, the workshop studio. My trusty anti-static workbench is now dead center, so we can position cameras and lights wherever we need them. No more reusing the same two stale angles because there were only two patches of floor clear enough to fit a tripod in the old place. I'm kind of surprised no one ever called me out for this, but since we moved to Colorado, I've almost never been able to appear in my own videos. The workshop was packed so tight, we just literally could not get footage of anyone building or using any projects. Now Brooke has tons of room to document the whole process complete with cybernetic host and his canine mascots. But here's the change I'm most stoked about. Voidstar Lab now has more labs. That's right, the workshop is the entire basement. Three rooms plus extra. On the left we got the storage room with deep shelves to hide all of my shameful clutter. The sewer may or may not be backing up into this room. If I don't think about it, it can't hurt me. Down the hall and on the right, we've got the hollow suite. This is going to be my writer's room, editing bay, gamer man cave, and temporary studio till I unpack all that situation. This wall is going to be painted green screen green so I can make duck face thumbnails and finally join the YouTube metagame. That wall is going to have something crazy like a bigger chromance to hornswoggle and bamboozle on my video calls. The rest of the room is going to be left empty so I can actually play VR without smashing anything. I've literally never been able to play a VR game with enough room to extend both arms, and I am very excited. But like a small town in rural Wisconsin, the best part is in the closet. Did you know the first Void Star Lab was a closet? It was my old room at my parents' old house, and we converted the closet into a gamer layer thing, which became my workbench when I formed Void Star Lab LLC. It's now a decade later, Void Star Lab is still around, and it's arrived at my own room in my own house. It just felt right to bring things full circle. This rickety IKEA table used to hold my resin stuff, but now it's just a placeholder. I've been talking with FlexiSpot, makers of what at least seem to be high quality motorized desks, and they sent me one of their desks, comma, motorized, for me to use in an upcoming episode. I'm going to shove this thing in the closet and add one of those hipster desk treadmills so my ADHD ass can get the zoomies out. I know this all sounds precious, but I truly think that all of this is going to improve my videos. Like, I love walking around while I think and do stuff. You can see how much I move around just reading words off a heads-up display. And I've heard that professional writers have an easier time doing their job in a designated writing room. This whole wall behind it is going to be decked out, literally, top to bottom, left to right, with a preposterous preponderance of mismatched monitors, and just oodles of ergobleds. Why do I need all those monitors? Who said I needed the monitors? It's my lab, I do what I want. But I've saved the best for last. This whole ordeal has forced me to just reckon with what my life has become, and admit, for better or for worse, I've created a 3D printing channel. The old place was set up to store a lot of printers and filament, but not really to shoot them. Well, no more. This final room is being optimized floor to ceiling 360 degrees specifically for 3D printing. The first bench is for the rank and file workhorses that I use to run most of my jobs, Prusa, Lulzbot, etc. They'll be well fed by a wall mounted rep box custom made for me by my man Pooch at Repcord. He's the one who hooked me up with the beef jerky filament, the most cursedest filament in the entire cursed filament episode. And now I'm going to return the favor. He's laser engraved this with the Void Star Lab logo and illuminated it most garishly. The next bench is for resin. That's right, people, resin in a sealed basement. I'm bringing in a full size laboratory grade fume hood from Sentry Air Systems that is going to vent directly outside. This should be more than enough to evacuate all the resin and isopropyl vapors, and it'll also let me run the machines without hoods or enclosures, so you can get the clearest look at the incredibly cool resin printing process. The final bench is for the multi-material machinery. The E3D Tool Changer and Bamboo X1C are super complicated machines that also have some action going on in the back, giggity. This bench is the only one on casters, so in return for a little stability I can pull it out and service these sexy beasts from all angles. The FL Sun V400 is going to sit right here. I was supposed to show all these new printers like, you know, months earlier, but look, I'm doing my best. There's been a lot of stuff.
all the stuff coming into the apartment from above. Void Star Lab's iconic filament closet is going to get even more iconic. This entire thing is going to be stacks of racks of spools, all visible at a glance, like Matrix style. I don't want to spoil the fun, but let's just say I'm going to rip Joel the 3D printing nerd all the way off. The accursed reel of beef jerky PLA that started this whole thing is going to get its own dedicated spotlight. So that's the future of Void Star Lab. The future Void Star Lab. This ridiculous schedule means I kind of have to hack everything together as I go, but hopefully as I finish each room, I'll be able to give them their own dedicated videos, or at least updates for the patrons. So I hope you stay subscribed and get to see my dream workshop come together. I'd again like to express my absolute most heartfelt thanks to our generous patrons like Lab Scientist, The Pink, Ballistic Brick, and Juriel. This insanity meant I couldn't release anything at all in January, so... I truly appreciate your loyalty, it made a, just a tremendous difference. I'm truly grateful to our collaborators who kept at least some of the lights on while Dirty Water was shorting out the rest. Microwave, Schleppy the Schwagster, Modern Idiotism, What the Chuck, The Suits Ruined Our Fun, Caster the Catboy, Alan Reiner, and Command. I did not hide their names in an easter egg. I printed them all in fancy plaques so all collaborators, past, present, and future, will become permanent parts of the final Void Star Lab. If you're supporting the channel, remember Remember to check out the Patreon page to see that candid walkthrough of the old lab, and if you're not, feel free to chip in and gain access at patreon.com slash Zach Friedman. I normally tease the lab assistant supporters here, but this is serious time. You made this happen. From the bottom of my obsolete human heart, thank you to Marxism, Good Lady Nat, Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars. I inspired the Next Layers YouTube channel, so you guys should check it out. I'm gonna put that card up. Trans rights, Amanishi, Scratchfinger, Isekai of Mahiro Chan, Net, Clifton Henning, Scroto Sagans, Powerful CCH, Oral Netta, A Very Fine Dumpster Fire, Bum Tickly 69, Colin J. Webb, Loves Mindy, Are You Cheating On Me? Zach, I'm gonna pronounce your name right this time. Bradford Ben, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, Danny Devoid of Life, Onyx Plague, Get Lion Hike It, Kink Shaming Wireless, Talon Democratic Socialist, and Pretty Righteous Dude Dash Zach. Measure Once, Cut Twice, Re Glue, Cut Again, Granville Schmidt, Ashley Coleman, Burn It. My Dog is a Bear, One Handful of Beans, Quantumly Tingled, Call Sign Carrot, Vicarious Nergasms, Period Clots, Lydia K, I Wish to Switch My Irish Wristwatch for a Swiss Wristwatch, Burn Duck 3, Babington Q Stabsworth, The Fourth, Michael, Sunburnt Cat, Nathan Johnson, Jamie, SXP, Azunda, Wielder of Iron Heater of Shrink, Trump did nothing wrong, Bill Schooler, Varka, what you see if you're trapped in a blue whale's mouth, Cat's protagonist, a corn, Stormy design, Max Luck says that'll teach you Epson, Samuel Roos, Vigeli, Quantum Foam, Michael Roche, Dempsers, Boulder Creek Yard, James, Thomas B. Myers, Juicy Legend, Drinker of Juicy Legendary Fruits, Little Bobby Tables, Ryan Gooler, Bob, Brian Cofford, Bob Dobbington, Iron Rain, Kevin DeGraff, Eddie the Antifa, Steven, Six Foot Six Figure, Six Pack Schulte, Brad Cox, Joshua Godovin, Pussy Nugget, The Ghost of Brad Stormer, Cameron Swords, The Cuttle Fish, Xanforian, Rusty Flute, Good Suck, and Karunamon. They want you to know they're not a Digimon, which sounds like something a Tamagotchi would say. Thanks for watching, and thanks for sticking with us through hell high water and hellish high water. I'll see you in the brighter, drier future right here at Void Star Lab. But then it got worse.